The purpose of this video is to inform the public about the Dark Skies Ordinance, which will be in full effect on January 1st, 2015. To keep our small town atmosphere and protect our natural habitat, the city of Sanibel will be taking steps to reduce our island's light pollution. This means that all outdoor lighting must be fitted with the proper fixtures. These fixtures should cover the bulb from the top and go all the way down to shield its sides to prevent any uplighting. The following information is presented to answer your questions about Sanibel's Dark Skies Ordinance. Hey Travis, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. What are you up to? I'm thinking about installing a light in my driveway. It's going to really brighten up the place at night. That sounds like it would be really cool, but don't you think that is harmful to our island? What? Really? That didn't even occur to me. Yes, really. As you know, Sanibel is very beautiful and is very different from any other place here on Earth. As a unique sanctuary island, the city of Sanibel is dedicated to protecting our wildlife, our vegetation, and our habitat. But did you know Sanibel also protects our skies as well? Sanibel's law that protects our skies is known as the Dark Skies Ordinance. The purpose of this law is to reduce excessive lighting here on the island as much as possible. Why did the city of Sanibel adopt a Dark Sky Ordinance? The city adopted this law in 2000 to help protect Sanibel's small town atmosphere and even more importantly, preserve our natural habitat. Just how does the Dark Skies Law do that? Well, excessive light, especially uplighting, causes light pollution which can create numerous problems for our sanctuary island. Let me show you what I mean. Hello everyone, my name is Holly Downing. I'm the environmental biologist for the city of Sanibel. We all love this beautiful tropical island and naturally we all want to do whatever we can to help it. Part of the city's initiative to protect our island is the Dark Skies Ordinance, which will restrict certain lights that could pose a hazard to our environment. All outdoor lighting must use a full cutoff fixture that completely covers the bulb or light source at eye level. Take for example this light. Though the fixture covers the top of the bulb, the light source can easily be seen if you were looking at it straight on. However, any light that is enclosed on all sides by the fixture or by a structure is in fact compliant. Proper coastal lighting is also very important. Outdoor lighting, visible from the beach, must use both a full cutoff fixture and a compliant bulb. Low wattage, yellow, bug type bulbs are required in order to better protect sea turtles. Furthermore, after 9 p.m., all indoor lighting for properties on the beach should be shielded or turned off. Closing your blinds is an easy way to significantly reduce light pollution on the beach. By enforcing these laws, we can move one step closer to preserving the bountiful life and beautiful atmosphere of our island. Hi, my name is Amanda Bryant. I'm a biologist with the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation, and I coordinate sea turtle monitoring here on Sanibel. There are many animals, especially here on the island, that rely on the darkness. One animal in particular that relies on the dark night sky is the sea turtle. All across the island, you can find sea turtle nests that are clearly labeled and protected by SCCF like this one. Adult and hatchling sea turtles find their way to the water by following the brightest horizon, which on a natural beach is the water reflecting moonlight and the stars. Bright light on Sanibel's shoreline can confuse sea turtles, causing them to get lost and wander away from the shore rather than back toward the water. Dim yellow lights, on the other hand, would be less hazardous to our natural environment. We share this island with a bountiful environment and it is our responsibility to do what we can to help preserve it. Well, that answers most of my questions, though if I ha think of another, who should I ask? If you have a question about whether your lighting is in compliance or not, you should contact the city's planning department at 239-472-4136. Will I need a permit to change my light fixtures? No development permit is required to add or replace outdoor lights, unless if you are trying to add or replace outdoor lights in the Gulf Beach or Bay Beach zones or if you are trying to add, reposition, or replace outdoor lights mounted on poles higher than 10 feet above the ground. You will also need a permit if you want to add any outdoor lights. If I wanted to look over the dark skies regulations myself, where would I find a copy? You can easily find it on the My Sanibel webpage. Follow the city code icon to the municipal page and type in dark skies. If I'm still not sure whether my lights are dark skies compliant, would somebody from the city be able to stop, my, stop by my property and advise me? Of course. The City of Sanibel Planning Department staff 
is available to visit your property and advise you if your current fixtures are compliant. To contact the planning department, you can call 239-472-4136 or email Director James Jordan at jimmy.jordan at mysandbelt.com. Can the city provide me with a list of contractors who would be able to help me? The city cannot recommend any contractors. However, there is a list of electrical contractors licensed to work on Sanibel that can be accessed on the My Sanibel webpage. Just follow the link below. Or you can simply stop by the city's building department at City Hall to obtain a copy of this list. Sanibel City Hall is located at 800 Dunlap Road, Sanibel, Florida. Let me review your key points of Sanibel's Dark Skies Ordinance. All outdoor lighting must use full cutoff fixtures. Exterior lighting should be designed to prevent glare and light trespass. All up lighting is prohibited, including areas such as parking lots or on displays or signs. Lighting in coastal areas need to be yellow, bug type lights to better protect sea turtles. Permits are only required under certain circumstances. All lighting should be brought into compliance by January 1st of 2015. Property owners can contact the city's planning department to advise me on my property. Property owners can contact the city's building department for a list of eligible electrical contractors. That's right. And remember, our Dark Skies Ordinance preserves our island's small town atmosphere, protects our wildlife, and keeps our skies beautiful. By dimming our lights, we make this island a better place for all to enjoy.